Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our 2 p.m. session of the Cleveland Teaching Collaborative Sandbox, day three. Uh, my name is Molly Buckley Marudis, and it is my pleasure on behalf of the whole Cleveland Teaching Collaborative team, many of whom are here, Kalita O'Brien, Will Fistek, and Shelly Rose, um, to welcome our presenters for this session. Um, for our two o'clock session, we are happy to have Lake Erie Inc. here. Um, we have Amy Rosenbluth, and Christy, um, is it Glazier? Okay, got it. Um, and the title of their presentation is Engaging and Supporting Youth Writers in the Classroom. And I will let them take it over from here. And we will also, I do wanna mention uh, before I forget the incubator conference that Lake Erie Inc. is hosting. I'll post the link one more time. We posted it during the uh, commercial break, Shelly did. I'll post it here as well. Um, but at this point, I will happily turn it over to Amy and Christy to introduce and start their presentation. Great. Thanks, Molly. Um, hi, everyone. And thanks for having us here. Um, hi, Amanda. That, that was very nice to hear the, your, your words. Um, I don't have a, a fancy PowerPoint or anything like that, although we are going to get to see a little bit of a video. Um, I wanted to, I invited Christy, um, who is one of the teachers that we have worked with in the Cleveland Heights University Heights School District, really from day one, I think, right, Christy? Yes. Um, we, we just celebrated our 10th year. And I wanted just really to give you guys a little bit of information in general about Lake Erie Inc. if you're not familiar with us. And then um, Christy and uh, is going to talk to you about a specific project that we created last year when everything um, shut down. And it was that project is called Playing with a Purpose. But um, for the couple of you maybe who aren't that familiar with what we do, we're um, a nonprofit creative writing space for youth in Cleveland. And we formed, um, but I'm, I'm one of the founders along with Cynthia Larson. And uh, both of us were high school teachers and uh, the opportunity to um, kind of step out of the classroom and into the community um, came, came to us really about 11 years ago. And we were inspired by a program by Dave, that Dave Eggers started called the 826 Valencia um, kind of drop-in writing center. And both of us were out there and we were trained as volunteers and we visited different 826 sites. And we really felt like um, being English teachers, um, both of us went through San Francisco State's uh, teaching program and the Bay Area Writers Project was really formative for both of us as teachers and the importance of writing, 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 all kinds of writing. Um, and how what we noticed as we, you know, the last 20 years, how that was slowly being squeezed dry in the classrooms. Um, and that was a lot of our inspiration for not just bringing programs to kids in cool ways, but also offering support and resources and strategies to teachers, because we know what that felt like to be kind of bound by uh, outside expectations, maybe. Um, I'm not sure, I want to make sure I'm saying that in a nice way. Um, so we do work with teachers. If you're a teacher and don't know about us, I will share some links to our website later. Um, we've worked it with campus and this past year, crazy as it was, we actually saw about 1500 high school students. We partnered with the Maltz Museum and we developed a six session curriculum, um, an anti-racist cur curriculum connecting writing to the Stop the Hate essay. Um, but we were very clear with the Malt Museum that we didn't want the entire impetus to be a competition. So we went into the classroom really wanting to, to dig deep with the kids about what that means. What does it mean to um, address issues of hate and racism personally in your community, in your, you know, in the larger world. And so um, it was a huge, a huge, um, really wonderful project. And we're hoping that we're gonna be doing that again. I'm hoping it's in person, but we'll see. The other thing that happened for us last year was we um, created a project 
that I'm going to share with you. Can I share screen? Okay. So we wanted to try to, for the younger kids, find a way that to make uh, literacy and creative writing accessible on all platforms. So we didn't want parents to have to, you know, struggle with Zoom or try to figure out just um, how to get one more thing down, right? And so we created a series of videos um, specifically focused on writers and poets of color. And um, we just sort of celebrated all these different writers in different ways and we made it really fun. And has anyone in here seen it other than Christy? Okay. Um, I'm gonna run a little bit of this one. We'll run for maybe eight, a few minutes. We'll see. I'm so sorry about that. It was not, I'm not able to see you when I was sharing my screen. Oh, uh, hello. I was, uh, I was just uh, uh, listening to the ocean. Had a lot to say. Whew. It's great to see you. I didn't hear you come in, but um, today we've got a very exciting episode. But first, let's get started with our writer's exercise. Oh, yes, grab your pen and paper. You're right. I got my pen and I got my paper. Now, we're going to do our stream of consciousness writing, which means when our pen hits the paper, we're going to write about the same word for one minute straight. Your first word is... Get ready for it. Is... Giant. On your marks, get set, and go! Okay, um, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna move a little bit farther along in that video, but you guys could all see her. Okay. And Christy, is that the video, one of the videos you shared? That is not, but we did, she did free writing for one of them. Okay. Yeah. So um, I, I guess I'm going to jump ahead because this, this particular one is like 20 minutes. Um, so I'm just going to jump ahead to where we bring in a guest and where she introduces the particular book. This one is on Gwendolyn Brooks. So let's see. and a poet every single day. And really awesome. So happy to have him here. Come on, Damien. Hello. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So Dave, what are we going to talk about today? Well, today we're going to talk about this amazing poet named Gwendolyn Brooks. All right. I'm sharing. You're, you're the expert on her, so <laughs> fill me in. All right, cool, cool. So Gwendolyn Brooks um, was a black woman born in 1917 in Chicago, um, lived her life in Chicago. Uh, and became a poet, I guess how most of us become poets, uh, from, from a, lot of, a lot of pain and struggle, unfortunately. But what makes her interesting is that she came at a time um, after the Harlem Renaissance. So she was born in 1917, Harlem Renaissance, she was like 1920 era. Uh, so she would have been a child for that whole era. Uh, but thanks to Hughes, who was a major poet in the Harlem Renaissance era, was a big mentor in her life uh, and really Really helped her. Amy, we're not seeing your screen. Oh. Gave her uh, items to look up to, a place to reach to. I'm sorry. Well, she reached because uh, she became the poet laureate of Illinois, and then she went on to become the poet laureate of the entire United States. Wow. Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. And if you don't know what a poet laureate is, they are just you know, 
they are just um, a poet that's bestowed a special honor um, by their community, whether that be their neighborhood, their city, their state, or in this case, the whole country. Um, so she was bestowed with that honor and then she got to do different things as the poet laureate, put on different events and even um, mentor other poets and bring other poets to the forefront and help them out as well. So, sorry about that. The video goes on and I'm not gonna show any more, um, but I did, I, hopefully you get a taste of it. Um, Damien goes on to talk more about Gwendolyn Brooks and then a specific form of a poem um, called The Golden Shovel. And then Christy's gonna talk a little bit more about how she used that. Yes, um, and you know what? I, I did not recognize, I thought she called it free writing, but the stream of conscious, this is the, the um, video that we watched. Okay. But um, it was at the end of the school year and I was having difficulty keeping the children engaged. And I got this, um, I, I received an email and I watched one of the videos ahead of time. And when I put it on, it, I didn't know if we would pause or how it would go, but it was right before lunchtime. And my students, you know, we go, we, we go to, um, they, they go to recess before lunch. They wanted to finish the video. So if you, if you know fifth graders and you know recess, like they don't often like when a teacher impedes on their time. So they really enjoyed it. And I felt as though it wasn't just an academic um, win for everyone, but I felt that the, um, there was social and emotional wins in it. And um, when Damien was presented, introduced, I saw the children and some of my, my students, um, especially two of my African-American boys, like sat up and they, they leaned forward. I think that they were interested in seeing someone that looked like them, you know, presenting, as well as the way that this is presented is in such a whimsical and fun way that when we did the golden shovel, um, it, it's you take a line from a poem and then you use each word of that, that line as the end of your line of poetry. And I, you know, I thought that it would, children would pick like four word lines. No, they really took it seriously and it was fun and they were moving around and I had to tell them, you know, keep your masks up and whatnot, but they were really intent on helping one another. And so when I contacted Amy, I knew that she probably had funding for this and she said that it was through the Cleveland Foundation and I said that um, if we could um, provide any feedback to the funders. And I said, you know, whoever wants to write a letter, please do. And if not, you know, you can go to the game station because I wanted to see how relevant it was. And almost all of the children, now it wasn't a hundred percent, but almost all of the children wrote a letter and then attended the game stations. So I just, I think that, that um, I plan to put it in my, my plans earlier. And I hope that this continues because it was, it was a fabulous experience. It was easy for me when I spoke to Amy about it. She said, oh, this would be great for substitutes. And I was like, I think I'm too greedy. Like it's such a positive experience that um, I, want, I want to have it with the children, but I do agree that it would be positive. And whenever I was pre preparing, I saw that you had it intended for grades one through four, but I do not believe that my students were, you know, it was, it was just as engaging for fifth graders as it would be for younger students. So. Thanks, Christy. And um, I do wanna show you guys one more thing, which I won't goof up here. Um, this is, uh, if you go to our website, um, this is our Playing with a Purpose page. And it lists each video. So the link is right there. 
But what we've been creating are these outlines. So we have a teacher guide, and then we have what we call a grown up guide, so that the grown up guide is for a parent. Um, uh, you know, maybe if somebody else is doing it with the, with the child that's not, you know, um, a teacher, so they're not worrying so much about standards, but they still want to have some things to talk about or some activities. And then we have the additional resources. Um, so we've been doing this with all of the different videos now. Um, so if you go to the website, they're, they're, pretty, they're pretty well outlined now. You can see the, the writer. Um, our most recent one we did was Octavia Butler. And we did do one with Jason Reynolds. Um, the Basquiat's really interesting too. So, um, yeah, I mean, we, we came up with this because, again, we were really, we were thinking about two things. The first was accessibility. So everything shut down and kids, people couldn't get Wi. you know, it was just crazy, right? It was like, how, so how do we develop something that somebody could watch on their phone just as easily as they could watch on a laptop? And so YouTube became, okay, so then what are we, how are we going to make something that's fun to watch on YouTube? And um, I just, we're really happy with it. We really, it took us longer than we thought to get through the whole production and the study guide and really kind of get into a groove um, because our narrator, um, Amy is white, but we really did want to make sure that as many times as we could, we were bringing in um, poets of color, writers of color to really be, um, be a presence and be, you know, a model, as Christy said, so that if kids are really looking at, you know, writers and artists and poets, um, they find uh, a model right there. Um, so now we're really excited to start this coming year because we want to get it into classrooms. And we've been reaching out to libraries um, to also say you could set this up as a reading resource. So you might show this to families and then you might have a display of Jason Reynolds books, or you might have, you know, different poetry books. Um, Nikki Giovanni is one that we have as well. So I think that's really what we wanted to share um, just as a, as a resource, you know, our most, it's free, it's out in the universe. We would love for you guys to just pass it along. Um, we've done some testing with some of our high school students and they love it. Even though like the activities are geared, you know, it's kind of goofy, they absolutely love it. Um, Amy is a really engaging um, host. She's funny, she's smart. And so it really is kind of an all age thing. Um, and that was another thing we wanted was maybe a family has it. So on the weekend, here's something to share with your students where you can kind of, it's literacy, it's creativity, right? Um, so I, I think that's, do you have any questions for Christy or for me about this in particular? I was going to say, it's amazing. I'm scrolling around the website now, but I think you've expanded the offerings really tremendously. So it's quite an impressive collection of resources um, to, for all of us to know about and the, gr the greater Cleveland Teaching Collaborative to know about. So yeah. Um, and the other, the other thing I would push is, um, so we work, we do work in the schools. That's one of our, our paths in is directly supporting teachers. Um, we don't push our way in. So I do want to let, you know, we reach out to a teacher. Usually we try with principals, but generally we, we end up with a teacher and we say, this is something we have that we think you might like. Would you be interested? Would you talk this up with your team? Would, how can we support what you're doing? We're not about saying we have some better thing or different thing. We're really, as teachers, wanting to be a resource and, um, and kind of some inspiration maybe, right? Um, because we know how hard it is. 
Um, but the other thing we offer is a lot of different community programs for kids that sometimes the teacher is the one to get them to that program. And look at my handy dandy book here. So um, we publish youth, uh, Cleveland Kids, and this is our newest publication. Um, there's 55 kids from the Cleveland area in this book. And um, it's gonna be officially launched on July 22nd at, on the incubator. We're gonna have a reading, but you can buy them now. We sell them in the bookstores. Um, we have a group of teens who are the editors. They come up with the theme, they come up with submission guidelines, they share it, and then they're the ones who do the first read and they work with editors. We bring in editors from Belt Magazine and they decide on the layout, the, the table of contents. Um, any kid is welcome. <laughs> so we had homeschoolers, our, our editors this year were like Shaker, HB, School of the Arts, Campus, I think, Heights. Um, it's, it's a really powerful community that happens actually for them. Yeah. And I noticed a question, Shelly. Do you want to ask the question? Oh, sure. I can voice it. I tend to put things in the chat so I don't forget to ask. Um, but one of the things you said struck me because I'm more on the technical side of some of this. And you said that production for a resource like this, you, it took a little longer than you expected. And I wondered if you would mind telling us if there were a, was a specific challenge or something you learned about producing a resource like this that you could share so that we all know better moving on. <laughs> Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I think we realized that 22 to 25 minutes was too long. So, cause that was our original thing was like 20 to 30 minutes. So that, that video that we start, the earlier videos are a little longer. Um, it, and we also realized we needed to move to the writing, the writer early, quicker. So the earlier videos have Amy kind of doing games and getting the kids engaged. And we sort of thought if you're a teacher, you might want to move a little more quickly into the, the meat of the, you know, the lesson, I guess, or the subject. So those were two things. And then the other thing was, um, like I said, we, we became really intentional about inviting guests to help Amy. And if you guys take a look later, our very last one is um, one of my alumni. Um, he's a student, I, well, now he's 25 or something, but um, he, we just invited him on to read a book. And so it's just Patrick reading. But again, there's, there's this sort of power in like having this, you know, young black poet, you know, reading to young kids and, um, we just became really intentional and, and wanting to follow up with those things took more time. Thanks. I think any time that you have someone new and interesting, it, it engages the children. And I think that I, I have not always been um, embracing the side of technology. And I think even when everything returns, I'm going to have people zoom in from work and read and talk and share because this is this is a positive resource that I, I think that should not be lost because the children are like, oh, you know, like what's their opinion? What are they doing? And, and then it's also another audience for the for the children. And I would say the classes where we were invited in, um, um, the kids were like, you know, when we said, oh, well, your teacher asked us to come in today, you know, the students like, you know, they were, they were like probably happier with their teacher too, you know, like, oh, you brought your friend in, like, like they're, they're, be, you're, every time that can happen, you just sort of see this like expansion of their own community of people who are smart and creative and willing to give something. Um, one of the things that we did the other huge thing that happened this year was we, we hosted our kids Comic-Con online and uh, we, didn't, we didn't know how that was gonna roll. 
And we had 140 kids in some form. And I have to tell you guys, I mean, it was some of the kids, we tried to get some evals from them and just ask in the chat. And the fact that they like, they just were just wanting to see other people, but they were also like wanting that creative, that spark, you know, that kind of connection of like learning is so much more than this one thing. And all these different forms of learning are so vital. Yeah. That's so great. I did sign up for my children. <laughs> did they did they like it yeah and I enjoyed it so John I ran the conference at Campus International on Hopin this year and I was clued in your the Lake Erie Inc was a month before ours or something so I would just couldn't wait to see a real conference on Hopin which we did use um, I thought it worked really well yeah not easy I mean that it's in itself was a learn I can't imagine the learning I I went through a version of it. So kudos to you. You know, just like you were saying, I guess Amanda was coming in from, uh, you know, the fact that people can come in from like, I mean, we had artists from New York and Chicago and Seattle um, and kids were from all over, you know, and that was, that was really cool. And I think like what Christy's saying is, you know, moving forward, you know, being able to, for us as an organization, be able to adapt and say, we're going to keep, I, I know for sure we're going to keep our LGBTQ workshop online. Um, it's worked really well. It's a way for like, I think we get a lot of kids from just multiple neighborhoods and areas who probably would not all drive to one spot. Um, and I think our college essay nights for kids are going to stay online. Or, or offer them virtually because it's similar. It's that it's like you can get a lot of different people who, whether it's transportation or just that energy of like actually leaving your house, it, it's, you know, you don't need to worry about it. Um, yes, yeah, finding out. Since you know Charles, I will post a link to his case study and he back in the spring when school was was really kind of you know undefined he paired up with his a colleague he from Baltimore and they did from California he lives in California now but the title of his piece was moving walls and this idea of peer editing that this writer could talk to his students you know just really a nice piece about what we're talking about and reimagining, continuing to bring people in, zooming in. And the last thing I, I was just reminded of is that um, I got an email like two weeks ago from somebody who said, um, our, our kid has been involved in the LGBTQ group since you started. They live in Arizona and they happen to be visiting Oberlin for colleges and they wanted to stop by this like makes me cry but um they wanted to stop by and see our space they were like felt so uh affiliated and they came in and and um Ronan was just like going from room to room and like you could just like absorbing it in this way and I, I asked the mom like how did you even find it she was like I looked up you know, writing, LGBTQ youth, help, <laughs> you know, teen. And um, that's really powerful. That's like really powerful, right? I mean, for, for them, but also like for us to know, to, and that's why to say like, that's a group we're just gonna keep virtual. That's amazing. Wow, so much uh, to think about. And I can't wait to go read and get a copy of the latest uh, publication. So thank you for highlighting that. Yeah. Um, and thank you, Amy and Christy, for being here today to share this work. Should give a big a CTC round of applause. Um, 
but it really is a pleasure to hear more about playing with purpose and see some of the videos and to know that they really are available and usable mm -hmm. and findable. So thank you to Lake Erie Inc. for making that happen.